My name is Dr. Lara Hyde, host of Nourishable, and I'm a beginning mushroom forager. Today I'm joined by my dear friend Paul Battaglia, former chef and experienced mushroom forager, Dottie, a fellow new forager, and my dog Elliot. We're exploring the forest in southern New Hampshire at the end of August for some choice edible mushrooms. So, some believe that these pores, if I break this open, mm. they're like little straws. Each little piece is just a hollow channel. Mm. Okay? And you grow to learn this. You can tell off the bat mm. whether it's a bullet or not. Just a lot of it has to do with the dome of the, of the cap. And so it's very spongy. Yeah, it is. Frost bullet. Pretty sure. I mean, <laughs> is it an old man? Yeah, that's definitely. You can f see it's furry. Give that a touch. A little old like man. Dime sized. No. Very fuzzy. Huh? Hello, old man. No, wait. You see the little bully? Oh, yes. I do see the little bully. That little bully looks to me like a very young porcini. And the stalk is usually bulbous, which this mm. is mm -hmm. a little bulbous. I'm feeling it's a little soft inside, which indicates to me maybe it could be some little worms, a lot of Then, you know, I'm going to break into this a little bit. In the worm. Uh, uh, oh, yeah, little, there's a worm. Is it a little worm there? Yeah. It's protein. It's not going to hurt you. Oh, velvet foot. Huh. Velvet foot. But feel it. Let's take a picture of that. We'll take it home and make a robe. Yes. Oh yeah, this is a gem studded puffball. So those little gems, they will like kind of break off and those are the spores. And spread. Something else that's exciting about mushrooms is they're pretty high in fiber, particularly this one type called beta glucans. It's a type of fiber that's also in things like oats and barley. A lot of the bacteria that live in our gut will eat that beta glucan fiber and then they'll produce short chain fatty acids that help nourish our gut lining. So they help keep our, our gut healthy and keep the integrity of our gut. Hello little chanterelles. Oh. <laughs> yeah, that, those are chanterelles. Even from this distance I know. Really? Well, I mean, I'm not trying to. Hey. Yeah, to me, that's what's defined using that term jewels of the earth because you, you spot them like, like little gems that pop up. When you have these in an abundance mm. and you put your nose right up to it, you, you get a very distinct scent of apricot. Really? Can you smell it? Really in there. Sweetness, definitely. Oh, can't tell it's in turkey. That's okay. But it, it seems almost like a little that's flower so cool. girl went and like was throwing mm -hmm. chanterelles along the path. Look, there's some chanterelles. Well, we don't want to be fooled by that. While they have that recognizable fiery color, uh, quite common in the chanterelle family, mm. uh, really until we actually know and explore, we don't know. But uh, let's take a peek. Now this is not a chanterelle. This, I think, is a variant of uh, what's known as a waxy cap. If you look at these gills, in order, some are long, mm. some are short, some are long, some mm -hmm. are short. So that's known as decurrent gills. Mm -hmm. I'm surprised it didn't run away. <laughs> <laughs> if it's a lactarius. Oh, wow. wow! Okay, now I don't know what kind it is. I'm not gonna bother with it because I only go with the certainties. You feel like a murderer, you know? Whoa! Think of coral that's under the sea, this looks very much like it. Uh, and in this case, this may be crown-tipped coral. Some coral is quite edible and some is not, so again, I You'd really don't away. bother with it. Now here's the thing about black trumpets, okay? Where you see one, you are likely to see a bunch, but you don't notice them. Mm. Could... Well, I think when I first saw them, I thought they were flowers. Turn away and then slowly return your head back to the area. And when you do that, mm. you now see them. This is exciting. This is, uh, <laughs> this is chanterelle family. Uh, Caterellus cornucopius is the Latin. Oh, that, that's very fitting. They look like a cornucopia. Yep. Mm. Unmistakable mushroom. Ba -ba -ba! <laughs> Gotta survey the area. In three or four days, you come back here and you might see just as many. And the, yeah. Elliot. You'll remember this place. You'll take us back to the Black Trumpet place. Thanks. She's gonna cry. <laughs> She's gonna <laughs> Don't 
know what? The... And you know what? This alone makes the trip worth it. An, an absolutely choice edible. Wonderful, wonderful. How should we cook these ones? In the most sim simplistic form, so a little extra virgin olive oil, some garlic, and maybe some finely minced shallot, mm. salt and pepper, and if there's some type of a fresh herb, to, a chive mm. or something like that, that's it. You want the mushroom to be the standout of whatever it is. Mm. So if you're tossing it with pasta, or if you're gonna saute it up with some chicken, mm. you don't want one ingredient to, to take away from your find. You know, cherish that moment. Yes. It's what you found is really what you're eating. And let the, anything that you add, let that be the side ingredients. We have returned from the forest and we have quite a bounty of stuff that we found. Um, so Paul, why don't we first go through what we found that is edible? Okay, um, and there's there's no bigger joy when you forage for mushrooms, mushrooms uh, than finding good choice edibles. And this fiery, orangish, reddish uh, bounty are Cinnabar red chanterelles, yes. Uh, a, a wonderful find. Anything in the chanterelle family that's edible is, is always a, a luxury to find. And, and to that point, we also found uh, a plethora of black trumpet mushrooms, which are also uh, the chanterelle family. <laughs> and this is about a third of what we found. We found so many of them. They are wonderful for cooking. Uh, really, in the simplest form, you, you don't want to... Uh, introduce any water to them. There's enough water content already. These will shrink down uh, quite a bit when they cook, but if you're fortunate enough to find this type of a harvest, you're bound to gain some satisfaction out of it. And then how about these guys over here? Uh, yeah, gem studded puffballs. You ordinarily find these in a huge abundance, but we found them just sporadically here and there and just gathered them along the way. Great. And then over here, these are some mushrooms that we found. We thought they were interesting. We didn't really know for sure what they were, but we decided to pick them. We kept them in their own separate paper bags so that they didn't potentially contaminate anything if they happened to be uh, poisonous. Um, so have we figured out what any of these are? Yeah, we yet? have. Yeah. We have. So this little guy here, might be tough to see, I don't know, but uh, these are trumpet chanterelles. They are actually edible, but uh, the integrity of them is a little bit lost on these two. We've got coral here. But there are several types of coral out there. I thought at first this might be crown-tipped, but after further investigation, it, we've determined that crown-tipped corals grows out of wood. These were found in soil with leaves and roughage around it. Hasn't been yet determined. A frost's belief. Edible with caution is what the book says. It's probably not worth it to even try. Um, one of the reasons is, is this, this deep red in the, in the underbelly of the, of the cap here. Uh, we were thinking along the lines of a peppered lactarius, but uh, not to be, not to be. I really haven't got any idea what that guy is. So these are our will not eat, and then these ones we will eat. So thank you so much, Paul, for you know showing me through my own forest again, and we found so many exciting things. No, and the season is still early, and we look forward to getting out again. Great, so thanks for tuning in to Nourishable. That's what science tastes like. <laughs>